Hello, this is Kathy, and today I wanted to talk about a couple of really innovative ideas. Solar heating and solar hot water systems. Two of the more popular designs for solar heaters are the pop can collector and the screen absorber collector. The pop can collector uses columns of ordinary aluminum soda pop cans with the ends cut out. The sun shines on the black painted pop cans, heating them, and the air flowing through the inside of the can columns picks up the heat and delivers it to the room. The screen absorber uses two or three layers of ordinary fiberglass black window insect screen as the absorber. The sun shines on the screen and heats it, and the air flowing through the screen picks up the heat and delivers it to the room. Both of these designs will perform more or less equally well. These systems are incredible to me because once you have built the solar heating panel, that's pretty much it for life. Very little if any maintenance is required at all. It just sits there and pumps free hot air into your dwelling. How cool is that? This system is used a lot to heat garages, outbuildings, barns, and things of this nature. It has been used as a supplemental heating system for houses with great success as well. I would think that if you had enough solar heating panels that you could get some serious heat for free after the initial cost of building the units. Both the soda can design and the screen design cost about the same to construct. The screen design is definitely the faster and easier one to build though. Many people have experimented with dif different heat collecting objects. The black screening and aluminum can systems seem to be the best that's out there though. Some people have built solar heaters out of flat black spray painted plywood and other materials of this nature. But what happens is that the materials heat up and they off gas noxious fumes or unpleasant odors. The aluminum cans and the black screen material don't seem to do this. That's why they're such excellent choices. In full sun, the incoming solar energy is about a thousand watts per square meter of collection area. Of this thousand watts per square meter, about 10% is absorbed or reflected by the glazing and never gets to the absorber. Of the remaining solar energy, about 95% is absorbed by the absorber. So, for the 1000 watt square meter that arrived at the collector face, about 850 watt square meter ends up actually heating up the absorber. Most of this 850 watts per square meter that made it into the absorber ends up going down one of two paths. One part is picked up by the air flowing through the collection collector and ends up heating the room, and the other part ends up being lost out the glazing. The job of the collector designer is to maximize the first part and minimize the second part. On solar air heating collectors, it is relatively easy to get most of the sun's energy into the collector absorber. The difficult part of air collector systems is getting the heat transferred from the absorber into the air. Air is a low density material with a low specific heat and that makes the heat transfer from absorber to air difficult. The things that tend to help in the transfer of heat from the absorber to the airstream are a high volume of airflow. A lot of absorber area and good and even airflow of high velocity air over the full surface of the absorber. All of these things helped to efficiently pick up heat from the absorber and to keep the absorber at a cooler temperature so that losses out the glazing are minimized. The good characteristics of the pop can collector from an efficiency point of view are that it has a lot of absorber area and it has a, a mixed flow of relatively high velocity air through the can columns. The good characteristics of the screen collector are that the thousands of strands of screen wire provide a lot of screen to air heat 
transfer area, and that the inlet and exit vents are arranged such that the airflow is required to pass through the screen to get from the inlet to the outlet. As an example of the size of the solar heater panel, panel that would be required to heat the space, you might be thinking about um, a 240 can system has the capacity to e heat a 1,000 square foot dwelling quite well. Now the average sized American home is approximately 1,500 to 2,500 square feet. So additional panels or larger panels would be needed to heat this type of square footage. The wonderful thing about this idea is that it has caused several companies to form supplying jobs for people out of a very clever idea that is economical and sustainable. Another great and low-tech solar concept is solar hot water systems. There are many designs for solar hot water heaters, but the one that really appeals to me is to build several 4 foot by 2 foot by 4 inch high wooden boxes that are painted a flat black. Then you coil a black garden hose inside this box and seal the top with a sheet of glass, an old window for example, or plexiglass. I actually built four of these units and estimated that they would produce a virtually continuous flow of hot water on a sunny day. However, I think building these insulated wooden boxes and using PVC plumbing pipe that was resistant to UV light would work quite well too. The best solution of course is to use copper piping, but that is a bit pricey and defeats the purpose of this design. When I built these solar hot water heating systems, I wound 100 feet of black garden hose from the box walls into the center of the boxes. If I had to do it again, I would wind the hose like a huge wheel. It is neater and you can fit more hose per box than the other way. Each of these solar hot water boxes could be linked to each other to produce a steady flow of hot water, which could then be stored in an interior well insulated hot water tank. Other ideas for the hot water are to fill a series of containers with the hot water and allow that heat to radiate back into the dwelling as needed for additional heating. When you sit down and start to creatively think about all of this, even more ingenious ways of constructing these systems springs to mind. For example, I had the idea at one point of building an off-grid wood or cob bath, shower, massage and healing house and a wonderful big soaking tub that had windows right next to it that could open so that you could have a healing hot soak and it would feel like you were right outside. I thought that several of these solar hot water systems could be installed on the roof of the building for the hot water. In such a system, a simple garden hose could be used that was needed to run this system. And to go even further, the entire system could be run off of a rainwater collection system. With the addition of the passive solar heating panels described earlier in this talk, the entire system could be constructed way out in the wilderness to provide a wonderful and comfortable in all ways shower, bath, massage and healing house. As for the water runoff, it could be used to water gardens or run through a natural ecosystem before ending up in a fish pond. Well, that's it for now. Thank you.